Mask acne can GTFO my face. Today I want to share with you a skincare routine to battle mask acne, specifically in this area. And I want to share with you different products that work for different people. As an acne sufferer and a proud mask wearer myself, I know the struggles of mask acne, specifically in the time that we're living in. And as a medical esthetician who understands the anatomy of skin, how the chemistry of different ingredients work along with the biology of your beauty, we're working with Juice Beauty to talk about what these different ingredients do and how to craft a routine that's actually going to work for you and a specialized routine. So if you have dry skin, if you have oily skin, or even if you have rosacea, these different skin types and different skin concerns need different things. So I have a bunch of different products in front of me that we're going to talk about showing you for your skin type, how to mix and match and actually create a routine that's going to help. So turn that like button as blue as this face mask and let's get started. The first thing that I want you to do when you get home is rip off your face mask. Actually, hopefully you took off your face mask in the car or on your motorcycle on your way home. If it's disposable, go ahead, throw it out, put it in biohazard. You do you. If it is reusable, throw it in the laundry. Next thing I want you to do is put on a face mask. Yes, that's right. We're talking about skincare and I love masks for a multitude of reasons, but in this case it doubles as kind of like a cleanser slash treatment even before you put on a serum or a moisturizer. Also, this is assuming that you weren't wearing makeup in this area. If you have been, please go in with something like a makeup remover or a makeup removing balm first um, to make sure that you break up those makeup particles, rinse those off the skin, and then we can go in with our mask. And again, I am recommending the mask before the cleanser because of what's in here, because of the way it works and masks in in general. You see, masks for me are kind of like press reset times. First off, when you put them on, they are super fun to like Instagram yourself with, but it also forces you to like take a break. They also sit on your skin for a longer time than a cleanser, so they can actually do work. They can actually penetrate. This is the Bamboo Pore Refining Mask from Juice Beauty. This is actually revolutionary. It is not a traditional mask that is drying or stripping to the skin, but I actually find it to be quite hydrating. This actually goes on almost like a moisturizer, I would describe it. It feels just like a moisturizer going onto the skin. It's very, very smooth. And then although it does dry onto the skin, it doesn't tighten up the skin. There are those Aztec healing clay masks or those other kaolin and betonite clay masks. Again, I do love those in certain situations, but when they do give you that kind of tight pulled feeling, sometimes that's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's itchy. And especially if you have acne, you want something that's going to treat the acne. So actually having acids or active ingredients that are going to do that, but you also don't want to aggravate the acne because acne prone skin is quite often irritated skin. When we turn and learn this ingredients list, we see what's actually in here, why this mask is both hydrating but helps with oil control, and what some of the actual ingredients are, the acids or the hydrators that really help to soothe the skin and help with acne in this area. The reason that this mask is not that globby, tight, drying feeling is because it doesn't start out with those clays that a lot of other masks do. This specifically starts off with the base of aloe vera as well as apple. Aloe vera is very soothing to the skin, and apple actually has malic acid, which is in this product. Malic acid is an AHA, an alpha hydroxy acid. It has a tiny molecule so it can get into the skin, but it's great for both dark skin tones and light skin tones and the way that it exfoliates. And due to that exfoliation, it can help with the keratinization of acne. Keratinization is this buildup of keratin or skin cells, corneocytes on the outer layer of skin. And often those really inflamed acne pustules or pimples are due to the fact that there's extra skin kind of being packed on here that isn't sloughing off. The technical term is desquamating, but when your skin doesn't do that naturally, Naturally, sometimes it needs a helping hand. Especially if you are wearing a mask all day, you're kind of keeping this pressed up against the skin. And even just that rubbing motion of this could cause a little bit of contact irritation. There is contact dermatitis that some people might experience. Um, and that just leads to more redness, more aggravation. It's kind of like sitting here and doing this to your pimple all day long. And um, you probably know from experience that that is not comfortable. <laughs> when we go a little bit further down the ingredients list, we do see that clay and that charcoal. These are the things that actually help with the oil control, which could be aggravating acne. These ingredients are super absorbent. They've been known to absorb oil and even other substances, specifically charcoal, we use it in medicine. As an example, if somebody comes into the emergency room for an overdose problem, specifically if they took too much Advil or calcium channel blockers, just like downing a bunch of pills, the stomach is not only pumped, but activated charcoal is put into the patient body. This charcoal binds to those drugs and helps the body excrete it so that those medications don't kill the person. Activated charcoal is amazing in those situations, especially if someone is ingesting those poisons, but when applied topically to the skin, it can bind to other things as well, specifically on the surface of the skin. Especially when it comes in contact with oil, it is very absorbent, so it really can help to clarify. What's important to mention though is that not all charcoal comes from good sources. This is something that I didn't know about when I first started using charcoal-based skincare five years ago 
ago, I was under the consumer illusion before I really understood what's in charcoal, when it works, when it doesn't, etc. And unfortunately, charcoal can come from some very morbid places, specifically burning animal bones. You see, charcoal is basically the leftover carbon after all of these other volatile substances from plants or animals are removed. And I didn't know this before, but sometimes charcoal does come from those charred animal bones or those leftovers. Charcoal can also come from coconut. Um, it can also come from palm trees, which I've recently found out like in the last two weeks about some of the environmental concerns around that. This specifically uses charcoal from bamboo. Um, it's much more sustainable. It's a byproduct of bamboo manufacturing. Bamboo also does have skin benefits, but the charcoal in here is from both a sustainable and an ethical source, which is something that, again, I'm trying to do better as a consumer, I'm trying to turn and learn those ingredients and put my money where my morals are. So this is something that I appreciate. We mentioned that this has that malic acid, that AHA from apples and pears, but there are also other AHAs in here, specifically tartaric acid. This is derived from grapes. It's another AHA, so exfoliating to the skin. And this also has vitamin C from ascorbic acid. This is super brightening to the skin. Vitamin C has also been shown to help in wound healing. And this also has one of my favorite AHAs, which is lactic acid. Again, these are acids that are safe for any Fitzpatrick type, regardless of where you fall on that scale, but they are effective. So they really exfoliate those outer layers of the skin, help with that decarotinization, and as a result, can help to soothe acne. There's also willow bark in here, and willow bark is where salicylic acid is derived from. Salicylic acid is that BHA, that beta hydroxy acid, and it's been proven in medical studies and by the FDA to help with acne. What's different about salicylic acid from these other acids is that it's oil soluble, meaning that even though it's a large molecule, it can go super deep into the pores and break up some of that oiliness and help the skin exfoliate off. And because it comes from willow bark, which is also where aspirin comes from, it's related to acetosalicylic acid. Because of that, it might have slightly anti-inflammatory benefits as well. So if your pimples are red and raised and angry, this could help to soothe them. There's also aspen bark in here, which I found to be a very interesting ingredient of choice. Specifically, aspen bark is antimicrobial, and this formula is fragrance-free. So you know that I don't hate fragrance. I don't think it should be demonized. However, this does not contain fragrance if that's something you're concerned about. This does have plant actives, but this is actually something that I do really appreciate about Juice Beauty. They do include a lot of organic ingredients in their skincare, but they back it up with science. I feel like there are a lot of natural brands on the market or clean brands on the market that don't actually do their research. They're just kind of pushing or greenwashing this narrative without actually backing it up. Juice Beauty actually has clinically validated results that they've paid for by third parties to do testing to actually see if the plants that they're using to derive these active ingredients from are working, which from a scientific perspective is very appreciated. And again, it's one of those things where don't be swayed just by fancy marketing. You see a lot of that in the industry, especially right now, but Juice Beauty has been around for 15 years. They actually do the research, which I appreciate, and they actually innovate with their formulas and ingredients, unlike other brands that kind of just take what's on the market and reverse engineer it and just recreate it. They're actually creating things from scratch, which is truly appreciated. So if you're looking for a hydrating, non-drying face mask, this is what I would recommend. And again, you're putting this on kind of as a cleanser because you think about it, a mask sits on the skin for 15, 20 minutes. It really imparts whatever nutrients, whatever acids are in here into the skin, and then you wash it off, which is kind of like a cleanse. That's the other thing is that this actually washes off clear. Um, there are other charcoal masks that I've tried. You know that I love The Ordinary, but their charcoal mask is really not that great. It actually gets stuck in your pores and it just makes me look like I have blackheads and then I have to sit there and scrub at my skin. It is not a fun time. This does wash off clean and it again keeps the skin feeling hydrated, which for angry acne prone skin is so appreciated. Once you've washed that off, you can go in with a regular cleanser. I actually don't think you need to. Again, if you weren't wearing makeup throughout the day and assuming that your sunscreen came off well, you could go in with a toner right after this. However, if you do want to use a cleanser, these are some that I would recommend. First, if you have super oily skin and you have younger skin, so maybe teenage skin that's very hormonal, this is Panoxyl. It is the 4% benzoyl peroxide acne wash. It is again a creamy wash. So again, like the mask, we're not overly stripping or over drying, even though we're doing some oil control and some acne control. Benzoyl peroxide as well is keratolytic and it's antibacterial. So it kills the acne bacteria, but it also helps with that dead skin buildup that happens on top of the skin. If you do have more mature skin or if you don't like benzoyl peroxide, I would personally recommend this from Phyla. This is a salicylic acid cleanser that works really well. This does have a touch of alcohol in it, which can be drying for some, but really the alcohol in here is actually to help this penetrate deep into the skin. 
so you're actually getting that salicylic acid where it needs to go. On top of this, it has tea tree, which some studies have shown can be slightly antibacterial or antimicrobial, and if you do have more adult acne, specifically more hormonal acne, and if your skin responds well to salicylic acid, this is what I would recommend. Now, if you do struggle with fungal acne, that is completely different. We've done a video on why fungal acne is not actually acne. Um, it's just a fungal overgrowth that kind of creates these pimple-like lesions, but if that's something that you are struggling with, I would instead recommend going for something like ketoconazole or nizerol. Your doctor can prescribe these, and those are actual antifungals, which are going to be more helpful for you. Once that's been washed off, you can go in with a toner. Again, two of my favorites are, of course, from The Ordinary and from Paula's Choice. This one from The Ordinary is a glycolic acid toner. This has those AHAs, and this is actually at 7%, so it's a decent amount, and the pH is 3.6, so this is very acidic. It is very, very strong. This is really great for maybe normal to dry skin. Oily skin can use it too. However, there is also this one from Paula's Choice, which you can choose. This is the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant, and remember, BHA is that salicylic acid. This one is basically that salicylic acid as well as green tea, so there's a little bit of an antioxidant boost, which can be soothing, which again, we need for this area. If you do have super oily skin, I would highly recommend this because it does work, and I would personally recommend applying either of these by just putting them in your hand, patting on, or putting onto something like a reusable bamboo cotton pad, and then swiping onto that area. The purpose of a toner is to rebalance the pH of the skin so that your other products next will penetrate deeper, as well as to make sure that, you know, some of these active ingredients are actually going to get where they need to go and help out with those breakouts. Then it's time to go into serums or treatments, and what I would personally recommend, because I love them so much, are retinoids. We're talking about anything in the vitamin A family. Now, if you do have a prescription from your doctor, this is really the gold standard. This is retinoic acid. It's actually what our skin creates naturally from beta carotene, which you get from eating your carrots. However, I understand that not everybody has a prescription or the ability to get one. What I would personally recommend are things over the counter. This is one from The Ordinary, which is retinol. This is also from Dermalogica. This is salicylic acid and a retinol derivative. Basically, both of these can go onto the skin, and your skin actually converts them or transforms them into this more potent form. Retinol is amazing for acne, especially if you have hormonal acne, especially if you have whiteheads, and if you have acne scars. It can also be helpful for graceful aging purposes, specifically if you have some collagen degradation or if you're starting to see fine lines and wrinkles that you don't like. Um, both of these are ones that I would recommend. This one from The Ordinary is hopefully back in stock. It's just retinol and squalane. So again, it's very basic, but it's also very inexpensive. You can get this over the counter, and if you have younger, more teenage acne, I would highly recommend this. This one is also amazing for teenage skin, but the price point is a little bit higher. It's around $80. But what's amazing is that this is a retinol derivative in an oil blend that has salicylic acid. So again, that salicylic really penetrates into the pores, helps to break up some of that oil, really helps to exfoliate the skin, and can help with some of that redness, that inflammation, and that irritation. Once you've got that on, it's time to put on your night moisturizer, and this is really, really important. And in this case, with mask acne, there's actually an option to mix some other actives in to make these work better for you. These right here are formulas with very basic ingredients that can go onto the skin, again, lock in that retinol, and just soothe things over. However, if you're really struggling with acne and you want to pack a little bit of an extra punch, there are ingredients, such as what you can find from The Ordinary or from The Inky List, that you can actually mix in to something basic like this Trader Joe's moisturizer. And then you're getting more targeted acne-fighting ingredients along with that moisturizer overnight. So let's start off with the bases that I would recommend. This is one that I found recently that I love. It is from Trader Joe's. It's the Ultra Hydrating Gel Moisturizer. This reminds me a lot of the Neutrogena Water Cream, only it's cheaper, it's cruelty-free, and it's vegan. This is a really great glycerin-based moisturizer, so again, a humectant that's really going to soothe over the skin, absorb well, and protect your skin overnight, but there's nothing in here that's actually going to fight acne. And that's why if we mix in some of these add-ons, we can actually make this more effective. Some of the add-ons that I would recommend are things like from the Inky List or from the Ordinary. Specifically, if you have normal to dry skin or maybe more mature skin, I would recommend beta hydroxy acids. There is one from the Ordinary, but I believe that they're reformulating it, so I don't know if it's for sale anymore. I think it was like too strong or too powerful for the market. Um, but this one is from the Inky List. I find it to be comparable, and again, you can just mix these in in your hand, really emulsify them, and apply to this area. If you do struggle with acne, but also have those little brown spots or little red spots that are left behind from pimples, I would personally recommend mixing in one of these two AHAs. This is lactic acid from the Inky List, as well as mandelic acid from The Ordinary. And again, you can mix one or both of these. Yeah. 
You can mix one or both of these in with this moisturizer and apply to the skin, therefore imparting some actual ingredients and some exfoliation overnight into this soothing formula. Another formula that you could mix these actives into is this one from the Inky List. This is the vitamin B, C, and E moisturizer. This imparts some of those vitamins to the skin and it is a glycerin plus caprylic triglyceride base. So whereas this one goes on a little bit more watery, this one goes on a little bit more like a cream if you do want something that's a bit more occlusive and kind of seals this all in. If you do struggle with rosacea prone skin or deal with a lot of redness, I would personally recommend azaleic acid. This is from The Ordinary and it's also in a silicone base, so it's much thicker. This kind of goes onto the skin and feels like a primer. It's very soothing, but again, because it has that azaleic acid at 10%, this is an ingredient that's proven and actually prescribed medically for rosacea. So if you're dealing with mask acne on top of that redness and that flushing, this one is what I would recommend using that could really help. And if you are afraid of kind of mixing some of these things together or if you don't want to take on that responsibility at home, you can look for things that have already done it for you. This is one from Murad. This is the Outsmart Acne Clarifying Treatment. And this is, again, basically an overnight moisturizer that has 1% salicylic acid already in there. And again, depending on your comfort when it comes to your skincare routine, depending on what your skin type is and what your specific skin needs are, these are different options that you can use and actually target for your skin and your face. Once you've done that and applied it, you wear it overnight, kind of like a night moisturizer or a sleeping mask, and you wake up in the morning. Now you know that in the morning I don't actually use a cleanser on my face. I find that my nighttime skincare routine was so good that I don't need it. If you did sweat at night or if you did get super oily at night, you might want to wash. And again, I would recommend the same cleansers that you're using at night, just in the morning. Keep your skincare routine consistent. You can use either of these in the morning or you can go ahead with that ketoconazole um, if you do have fungal acne. Similar to the moisturizers, you could apply a toner in the morning. You don't have to, however. Um, if you do, I would recommend using the same one you did at night. Just remember that all of these do have some acids in them, so you need to apply a sunscreen. I personally like physical or mineral sunscreens, and especially if you do have these open acne lesions, some of the organic or chemical sunscreens can be a little bit more burning or irritating to the skin um, in sensitive skinned individuals. So I would personally recommend some of these, which work really, really well. This one's a little bit more like makeup because it does have a tint to it. It's also got that super smoothing primary-like feel. And on the other end, here's some sunscreens that don't have that primer-like feel. Um, it's your basic effective SPF. This one has a little bit more of a white cast. If you rub it in, I find that it works pretty well, but it's probably not great for the darkest of skin tones. It's the Make Prem UV Defense Me, and I find that this one actually soaks into skin really well. And this, I would say, is a great recommendation for people who do have darker skin tones. Now, this is something interesting that most people probably won't recommend, but I personally do. If you're wearing this mask all day, nobody's seeing this area right? What if you wore a spot treatment for an extended amount of time? Again, I do always recommend following manufacturer's directions. If you have a dermatologist or esthetician, please ask them about it because most of these are formulated to be put on the skin for five to 10 minutes. However, I have found that with extreme acne for myself and clients or patients, if you use some of these overnight, they work very well. And if you do leave these on throughout the entire day, if you're wearing this underneath your mask, nobody will see them. And especially if you have those honking cystic pimples that are just so hard to reach, um, especially if they keep popping up in this area, you're rubbing your skin against your mask, it's irritating and you don't know what to do. These are what I would recommend. This first one is from Acne Free. It is the Terminator. It is benzoyl peroxide based. So again, it helps with the exfoliation of the skin, but also with killing bacteria. The one thing to note is that benzoyl peroxide does stain. So again, if you're using one of these masks that is disposable, that's great, go for it. But if you're using one of these that is reusable, you don't want your spot treatment to stain the mask. So instead, I would recommend one of these. This first one is Sulfur. It's from Sonia Dakar. It has camphor, it does have some alcohol in it, and it's very nice and drying to these pimples. So again, it can kind of dry it up, especially those whiteheads right underneath your mask throughout the entire day. This last one is kind of shocking, but hear me out. This is an eye cream. I don't want you to put it on your eyes though. This is from the Inky List and it is the retinol eye cream, but when we look at the ingredients, again, eye creams are overpriced facial moisturizers. Because this has retinol in it and because the ingredients are basically a skincare moisturizer, you could use this as a moisturizer or just as a spot treatment in this area. That retinol is again part of that vitamin vitamin A family, which was actually developed medically for the treatment of acne, and then it started being used for wrinkles and scars and other stuff. But especially if your skin responds well to retinol, put this on those spots. Just wear it underneath your mask all day, and this will give you an extra acne-fighting boost. Similar to what we discussed in the Why Mask Acne Happens video as well, you can also just put on that mask and make sure that nobody sees it. I know that it's frustrating. I know that for a lot of people, wearing a mask is brand new, and it can feel uncomfortable or suffocating or cumbersome, but it really is 
is about protecting you, protecting other people, being responsible, and really helping all of us get through this together. I spoke about this on like a YouTube community post in a more poetic style, but wearing a mask is really like a silent thank you or a silent handshake. We really can't shake hands anymore. And when just wearing a mask outside of a, you know, healthcare setting, you see someone else who is doing that as well, and you just kind of give them that nod because we both know that we're going through it together, but we're also taking initiative to protect others because we are kind-hearted people and we truly care. I know this video has a lot of information in it. Please take down and write down some notes on the specific ingredients that you think will work best for you or what your skin type is. Again, a huge thanks to Juice Beauty for working with us on this video and just for combining science and nature because I feel like that isn't done very well in the industry by a lot of other brands. Also, The Ordinary, I know that they're sold out of a lot of products. I don't know when they're going to be back in stock. I'm hoping soon, but if you'd also like a dupes video, for instance, what the Inky List has that could help, um, let me know and perhaps that's something that we could put together. So turn that like button as blue as this face mask if you haven't already, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so and join the Butterfly family. We're here to talk about skin science, the ingredients and chemistry of our skincare, as well as the biology of our beauty. So always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.